Everything feels slow. There's movement and there's heat, but the only noise you can hear despite all this chaos is breath. It's yours, but it's also a stranger's. There's it's like someone else is using your body to breathe. You're stumbling. Luis. I need you to describe your character and tell us your character's name, but I would love for you to do that with the understanding that your mouth is filled with blood. All right, well, uh, uh, my name is Xerxes Iletas. I'm six feet tall, I'm a paladin. Broad-shouldered, muscular, dark hair, wavy, medium tan brown skin, amber eyes with mm, a kind of troubled, sometimes emptiness behind them. And uh, I imagine right now he's stumbling around, uh, wiping the blood off of his mouth as he's trying to maintain his sense of his surroundings. I think I caught something. <gasps> he disappears into the pool, and you hear <gasps> the entire neighborhood in front of you vanishes <gasps> as a body the size of a mountain crashes into the city. Vroom. A massive red form writhes in pain, and a face as tall as a cathedral turns to you. A flood of sanguine fluid <coughs> emerges from the mouth, and a horned figure looks at you. You look and see something older than the world look back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I approach. I'm sorry. What are you? What are you doing here? What is this? My child, I fear I am too late. There are secrets. They did not tell you. He opens his hand. I rush to it. His hand is the size of a marketplace. And you look, and in the center, translucent in ghostly imagery, you see a small tree, no taller than 10 feet. Ghostly light, translucent as blossoms move from it. And you see in ghostly light projected from the palm of this giant, this red horned giant. What does um, this mean? What is this? I'm, uh, I'm sorry, we must look. He is coming. From behind you, a figure emerges in translucent white light. Could you do me the favor of describing what your husband looked like in life. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I gotta go. It's been 10 minutes. So, yeah, when did we breathe that? When does that come? This whole episode is a trigger warning. <laughs> I'm too upset to take this. Uh, Evandrin is uh, about 5'10". He's just a little bit shorter than I am. He's got red hair, straight, about shoulder length, half elven in appearance. He looks, if you look at Elias, our son, you're seeing a, the spitting image of what he's going to look like when he's grown up. Evandrin steps past you. He cannot see you, and you understand in this moment because your husband does not meet your eyes that this is a memory. He is not here again, and he is still gone. Another 
figure, tall as a mountain. All of the light, all of the fire is but a shadow in the face of the dawn. You see a gleaming golden figure land with one colossal foot on the throat of this horned figure, press him further into the rubble of Avalir, mm. and you see the horned figure looks to you <laughs> and cries out. His hands are still out? You stand now in the palm of his hand. Oh. I, uh, uh, I reach down and I touch it. You see the figure, you do, you feel a pulse. You feel warm blood flowing through this giant. Oh. You look up, the face of the being above you is no face. There is no warmth to the eyes. You see the pitiless, featureless glare of the sun itself. I look up at its face. Is it is it looking down in my direction? It turns down to look at you. Turn your eyes from this sinner. He is beyond redemption. What has he done? He has betrayed his kin. You see, the horned figure turns to you and says, it's all right, it's all right. Just ask yourself, Xerxes. Whom did we betray? I can't. No. And he... Mm. I, 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 I... Stop! Oh. Boom! You hold your hand, and as you hold it up, the light of the sun leaves and is abjured. Boom! The horned fiend coughs, looks at you with the expression of a being that has just had its life saved and says, no mortal would do this thing that you have done. Zerk says, if you look down and see the stars, what will you see if you look up? His uh, hand is, or his fingers curled up. I know I'm in his palm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm, I look at his face and I start to approach one of the fingers that are standing up probably like a pillar. Mm -hmm. And I put my hand on the finger and lean on it and I'm holding on mm -hmm. to him. Yeah. And I look up. You see the ground, and it is fast approaching. What? And with that, you wake up. Sam's character. Sam, would you go ahead and describe your character for us? Sure. Uh, wow, what face to describe? <laughs> uh, uh, I am uh, Loquacious Seely. A changeling. Uh, my my normal, uh, or should I say, at rest uh, appearance is uh, pale skin, um, white white eyes with sort of dark uh, shading around them, white hair uh, in a sort of a up shock. Um, if you look very faintly on the on the sort of gray skin of my face, there are little uh, sort of veins, marbleization tendrils of of, uh, of black that. If you stared long enough, you'd see they, they sort of subtly move and shift constantly. Um, he's wearing a, uh, uh, a, a, gold, uh, a gold jacket with uh, a purple lining, uh, carries himself very high and mighty, um, and, but this is a broadcast, is it not? This is very much a broadcast. Well, uh, as Loquacious broadcasts uh, to the uh, Crystal Columns of Avalir, uh, before he uh, begins his proclamations uh, and heralds of the day, his appearance shifts uh, slightly. The veins in his in his face sort of 
uh, drip and move, sort of like paint being drained out of a can, and are uh, replaced with other pigments and other colors. His face becomes golden, as gold as, as his jacket, and his hair becomes as purple as the lining of his jacket. He's quite a sight to behold. He, he holds in his hand, um, is, it, is it a wand? Is it a rapier? It's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. it, it's long and has something at the end of it, like a, a like Bob Barker's old microphone. <laughs> yeah! Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, he, and, he, and he seems to speak into it and it magically amplifies his voice across, across the city of Avalir. Um, uh, and whatever <laughs> arcane and mechanical means he uses to broadcast himself are, are repeated over and over with a great echo across the city. Mm -hmm. Um, that's who I am. <laughs> Incredible. Um, we see boom, 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 arcane confetti blasts into the air, heralding the morning's announcements. Um, and we see as Loquacious appears on all of the crystal columns and in the main screen being the massive city dominating waterfall at sort of the heart of the city. Um, we see a spinning logo of the Herald's Tome. Uh, would you like care to make the morning announcements, Loquacious? I would, but. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Aria, Aria, I need my copy, my copy. Oh, Mr. Seeley, right Mr. Seeley, got you right here. Yes, sir, here you go. <laughs> wow. Count me down, count me down. Oh, in uh, in how five, do I look? Do I look good? four, yes. All three, right, here we go. two. <clears throat> good morning and salutations, sundry subjects of the soaring city of Avalir. I am Lo Loquacious Seeley, your handsome and helpful herald. I, uh, I report the news that shapes Avalir's views. <laughs> Tonight, as we all know, marks the eve of the replenishment and our return to Kath Moira, our terrestrial sister city. Remember, folks, make sure to fasten all those loose valuables and belongings tightly, <laughs> as our friends in the Navigators Guild wish to remind us that there's always a pinch of turbulence in our descent back towards Exandria Firma. And speaking of belongings, why not try Orison's odd tack, <laughs> the spell glue that sticks to what it's told. Uh, as Orison himself might tell you, and you you see uh, on the screen, on the on the crystals broadcasting this message, you see uh, Loquacious's face uh, for a moment uh, uh, quivers and st starts to morph and dissolve into another face. His hair changes as well, um, and to the untrained eye, it would look like. An edit or a, a cross dissolve, <laughs> but 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 to, but to, uh, to those who know that he is a changeling, uh, he's actually changing his physical appearance live on screen uh, to that of uh, of Orison. Uh, his skin becomes a deep red. Uh, his hair curls into curved uh, horns, uh, that of a, of a tiefling, and speaks with a totally different voice, uh, and says. Uh, hello there, I'm Orison from Orison's Odd Tack. <laughs> the trusted name in arcane adhesives for over 30 years. Check out our replenishment special, 50% off today only. <laughs> <laughs> Hop on down to Orison's. And then whew, it morphs back into uh, Loquacious Seely. <laughs> Uh, who announces, well, make ready for tonight's fireworks extravaganza uh, uh, to the Dawn's Ledge side and enjoy the parade of beasts beginning at sundown in Excelsior Plaza right outside the headquarters of my own Herald's Tome, your trusted record of renown. As the Archmages always say, knowledge is power. So pack a punch with a people's paper. <laughs> All glory to the Academy Arcane and to the proud people of Avalir. I'm Loquacious Seely saying, Seely you later. <laughs> Laren Koromar Seely. Speaking of Laren Koromar Seely, um, we are going to uh, uh, cut to the depths of Avalir. We do not see the sky here. To be subterranean in a place that rarely touches the earth is a very interesting thing, but we are deep within the Meridian Labyrinth, a network of passageways and arcane machinery, and we see a massive arcane engine gleaming silver, polished to pure reflection of its surroundings and illuminated by the light of its own spell engines. And we see therein a powerful wizard. Abria, would you describe your character for us? Let's go. 
Lairin Koromar Seely uh, is this tall, lanky, dark-skinned elf. Uh, her clothing is all gold and highly ornate, and even here in this uh, place that never sees sunlight seems to like glow with the light of the sun. She has a, a purple cape kind of thrown over her shoulder and in her hands she's just tossing this little screwdriver and every time it hits the air it turns into a different tool and hits her hand. She catches it again as she's sort of checking over uh, her great work. Uh, looking at her face she's very pretty and angular um, and her eyes glow with like this gold energy that is exactly her magic and it kind of radiates off of her. Uh, and yeah, she, the look on her face is one of both extreme focus, but also like that heartbeat before being distracted by something else. She's uh, focusing on everything down here. The entire heart of Avalir in her mind is hers. And so uh, you see her like mumbling under her breath as she answers a yet another sending uh, as she focuses both on this and the things that she's not looking on right now. A lion's head gargoyle on the door, little door knocker goes, <coughs> Madam, your ex-husband is at the door. <laughs> <laughs> My darling! <laughs> and I clock very quickly that we are super magic right now. Oh. Hi, Quay. Hi. Hi. You're home during the middle of the day. <clears throat> Don't you have a lot of stuff to do to land? I do. Come in. Oh, thank you so much. You see, I've been trying to reach you through the normal means, and it seems yeah. that someone's been ignoring someone else's. You know, when we separated, we said that we would try to remain friends, try to keep open, clear lines of communication. Well, you know, we, we are we a day the out time. from the replenishment. Uh, yeah, what? All the more reason. All the more check reason. Do you need from me? You look beautiful. What do you need? What do you need? Well, what do thank you? you. Thank you. I'm just saying we're going to be down there a lot, probably mm -hmm. mingling in the same uh, with the same folks, glad handing with the same people down there. If if we can't even talk amongst ourselves, then it's going to be very awkward for us. It's going to be very awkward for me, frankly, having to explain why there's this weird coldness in the room. And you know, I Are know you that you're obsessed your with your work. Social status, my problem right now. You don't have to. Just reply to my messages. Oh, the ones from Arya? <laughs> Arya is just my assistant. Mm -hmm. I mean. She's, mm -hmm. she's a fantastic assistant. She came highly recommended. I'm sure she did. She happens to be young. She happens to be attractive, but that goes with the territory. It has nothing to do with anything else. Of course it doesn't. I'm not safe on the side of the table. <laughs> of course it doesn't. You have my unadulterated attention. Well, right that now. would make the first time that's ever happened. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I begin summoning a firebolt. <laughs> Lou, could you please describe your character? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, Nidus is, I'm gonna look at a picture of him because I always forget. Uh, Nidus <laughs> is like kind of a stocky dude, uh, like right around 5'10". Um, he has uh, long dreads uh, cuffed with gold that come and lay just on his shoulder, uh, like wearing the uh, red of the golden scythe. Like a red coat. Uh, with uh, a like gorgeous golden pin uh, with the signature of the scythe, uh, with a cape draped along his back, he wears one of those funny like kind of Renaissance merchants ca floppy caps uh, uh, <laughs> to one side. Uh, his face long uh, scar from his pirate days over his right eye. Um, I know it's on my left, but I'm looking at a picture that's the reverse. So uh, uh, over his left, uh, over his right eye. 
<laughs> the viewers are also looking at yes, flipped yes. Okay. Oh, are, is it flipped for them as well? I think no. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> over his right eye is a scar. Over his left eye, you see three tattoo. Uh, he has tattoos of X's. He's got three uh, over his eye. Uh, a a uh, a beard that ends in a golden ring, uh, uh, and then set in his uh, face are uh, two eyes of hazel, flecked with literal gold. Flanked by some attendants. Guardian of the Seventh, Senior Sight Warden of the Eyes of Avalir. Travis, did you describe your character? Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you see, uh, standing tall, but with a, a cloak and, and a hood pulled up just behind his, uh, his feathered head, uh, a six and a half foot tall um, uh, Ice Fura. So uh, a bird person, if you will, with very white feathering uh, that falls into brown tips, mm -hmm. um, a dark beak with slightly gray, slightly bluish eyes, proud, strong shoulders, strong wings tucked back, but, f but fairly folded back beneath a, uh, a cloak, um, and uh, a, a badge of some sort that's just slightly hidden on his, mm -hmm. on his person. His arms sort of tucked in tight, only to, if for no other reason than to hide the double holstered axes, hand axes that are underneath his, his arm, and wraps uh, around his, his wrists and his taloned fingers and feet um, as, he, as he moves along. And this is uh, Serret Agrupnen. At the feet of Emir Porco. Who do we find, Marisha? <laughs> you see a middle-aged, although you wouldn't be able to tell, <laughs> elven woman, clear ivory skin with hair that is silvery white, almost reflects the sky around her. She has a long kind of collared, breasted coat over top that stretches down like a, a gown in an emerald green that almost has its own silken sheen to it with a kind of teal blue indigo, name your color dress, depending on how it hits the light mm -hmm. underneath. In her hair, she has this almost like a sun ray fascinator made of gold where pieces of her hair are falling through it and around her neck is a rigid golden ring. If you look closely at it, it has tiny blue crystals, almost like tiny Swarovskis, that are broomstone, Ooh. and it lightly levitates oh, and go. rotates and spins around her at all time, mm. as well as a orb, a glowing orb, that is her focus, that also just kind of hovers, almost celestial, planetary in nature. She looks as if the outfit was made for her this morning, because it probably was. <laughs> <laughs> her makeup is impeccable. She is the most put together woman you have ever seen in your life. And she looks up and she just goes, happy replenishing, grandfather. <laughs> Come with a plus one. Uh, let's say yes. <laughs> Oh, Let's no. say yes. Who did you bring? Uh, I brought, uh, it mm -hmm. takes me a second to remember her name. I love it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, wow. but her, wow. her name is, is Bolo, I think. Bolo? Bolo? Uh, she's, uh, she's a friend of a friend. We were sort of set up. This is the second uh, time I've ever met her. She's gorgeous, isn't she? Melinda. Madra mentioned that people were asking for plus ones at the last oh, minute. Oh yes, I, I yes. I told everyone that that would be fine. So all right, fantastic. Nice um, to meet you, Ambola. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, come on, yes. man. Bolo. How many Bolo? Bolo wants to be a reporter like me. No. I, eventually, I'm going to be a reporter. No, no. no. I have no. taken her under my wing. And I think she's got a bright future. This is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoop. Oh, oh. 
This your house. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Yes. Who's like Bolo yes. in this city? <laughs> you know what? You know what, Bolo? Why don't you go fetch us some drinks and some, oh. just do some mingling, you know? Oh. There's a lot of stuff that you can hear by um, picking up on people's <laughs> conversations in these events. You might get some leads and clues. So start practicing, maybe take some mental notes and get us some drinks, all right? In AOR, sometimes it is illegal to ask these questions. From AOR? You know, it's fascinating. I heard that there was um, some stowaways from the last time we visited oh, Aeor. not a stowaway at all. I, I, I sent a letter and had her brought here, so. Yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry, you I just. You want drinks? <clears throat> yes, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She walks off. Is it she she like, like, <laughs> you kill visual. everybody. Here you go, Paul. Think her name is Bolo. I think her name is Bolo. That's the anyway. most famous dude thing in the world to do. <laughs> well, I've brought like, the most random I, I, like, I think. Bolo means hello in Aorian uh -huh. or something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow. I think her name's Bolo. <laughs> Oh, she's really just saying, how are you, <laughs> every time. Anyway. I'm actually chasing down the rando that uh, Loquacious came with. Yes! Okay, <laughs> you go over, um, you go over and you see, um, <laughs> You see that uh, uh, you see that the uh, there is a there is a Hadmadad holding a small tray of drinks, and you see Bolo is there saying, "I need drinks from you, not this." And you see that the Hadmadad's like, "Listen, I only have a small list of pre-programmed responses. <laughs> I'm not actually sentient. So if I'm saying this, you know that you've asked for something that's not included in my brain." <laughs> Good evening. I know all the faces in this gin joint, but I, I don't seem to know yours. This bag is giving me a hard time. I'm sorry to hear that. I, I didn't catch your name. Bola. Bola. I am, I am Seret Agrupnin. My friends call me Pinch. Bola from... Aeor. <laughs> Bola from Aeor. Mysterious. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Can I escort you? I need the drinks. You need the drinks. This bag keep arguing with me. <laughs> yes, it does. I hate it when they do that. Can you destroy? <laughs> I can sense your frustration. <laughs> I'll be sure to take this up with the maker of this fine machine. Let me what? see what I can do. What do you mean machine is a bag? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back, I'll be back. Hood up. <laughs> Invisibility is a pretty beloved power. It's easy to get. Even very junior mages can master it. The problem with invisibility is light is very important for a number of functions. And no matter how cloaked you might be in it, you can't make your whole self invisible. Even if it's smaller than a pinprick, you need just enough of your eyes to stay visible, that light can hit them and you can still see. Now, perceiving a fraction of a pupil hanging in space, smaller than a grain of sand, would be beyond most people. But you've been trained to look for them because they always move in two. <laughs> Unlike your eyes. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, you look up in a mirror in the chamber, and you can see behind you, smaller than grains of sand, there are two pupils. I go about my normal business, bring my eyes down from the mirror, continue with the items, and I will uh, slowly reach under my arms yeah. and unsheath 
uh, both of my hawks. And as fast as I can, I'll spin and not only draw both of the hawks, but my wings <laughs> come out. Uh, for the first time in this campaign, go ahead and give me an attack roll. Oh, um, yeah! uh, and you can go ahead and give me a stealth. You don't even need a bonus action for it, but give me a stealth uh, to see if you can hide the drawing of the axes. Uh, 21 for stealth. Okay. Copy that. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make the attack roll with advantage. With advantage. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Thus, it's 18 both times, so a 25 to hit. You absolutely hit. You are going to roll sneak attack on this. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. What is that? Is that 8 d6s? Oh. It's That's 7 d6. Seven. Oh, God. Oh. Uh, okay, so that's 20. Four points of damage. You rolled one six. Ooh. No, I know I did it on. I did it because oh, yeah. I, I mean I could yeah. do seven. You know no, what? No, 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 no. No, You know what? I have him. Do it, do it, do it. Why not? Do I should just do it. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Let's hear the noise. I've never rolled this do many do fucking. Yeah. Old Let's go. Okay. Hey. Do that math. Do that. Fifteen. Math. Fifteen. Uh, twenty-three. Twenty-five. Twenty-five hey, points. Um, you whip around. Um, you see where the eyes are, so you don't need to even see where the neck is. If the eyes are that far apart, right there. Uh, the first thing that becomes visible is the blood hitting the wall, and you hear the drop before the spell fades. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, this person went from being invisible to being dead and didn't have time to register what was happening. You see a body materialize out of invisibility. Chunks of skin carved off of a shaved head. Lips carved off of a face. What? Wearing rags covered in infernal runes. A mortal man who nonetheless is stitched together with orange irises and bloodshot eyes staring out of a dead face. You hear behind you from the mirror. Oh. You will never reach the wild mother's embrace in time. Are you looking for something? You turn around and in the mirror you see a shape in mist, swimming in the fog, in the mutilated face of Vespin Chloris. Reaches forward, hits the other side of the mirror, the glass cracks, and the face is gone, and the crack remains as you see your own image behind the shattered glass in the reflection. And that's all for this episode. Oh